2022 Infinity QX60 Review, Making Memories In its first generation, the Infinity QX60, nay JX35, was definitely a vehicle that existed. Among three-row, luxury crossovers, it was one of them. If you were shopping for a ride, the QX60 was something you could buy. Yeah, this is all incredibly faint praise, but it speaks to the QX60's position in the segment, unremarkable, unmemorable, and otherwise invisible relative to the three rows from Acura, Audi, or Volvo. So there's nowhere to go but up, and dear reader, that's just what the 2022 Infiniti QX60 does. Once again sharing its platform with the Nissan Pathfinder, Infiniti's three-rower receives a dramatic glow-up, smoothing out the Pathfinder's chonky, squared-off body and attaching a gorgeous cabin while retaining the tech and powertrain of Nissan's hugely improved family hauler. This mid-size CUV is finally worth remembering, even if the end product behaves a lot like the Pathfinder. Design, in my humble opinion, Infiniti is building some of the prettiest cars on the market and that includes the QX60. Taking after the appropriately named QX Inspiration concept, this six-seater does an expert job of hiding its relationship with the Pathfinder while softening some of Infiniti's odder design touches. This Infiniti ditches the kink C D-pillar treatment found on the QX50, Q50 sedan, and Q60 coupe, opting for a simpler floating roof design vertically bookend by subtle kicks in the chrome trim at the roofline and belt line. The fascia is refined and attractive, with slim headlights and a sizable grille. Infiniti exercised restraint with bright work, it could have added tinsel to the grille and lateral intakes, but the black diamond pattern is tasteful. Ditto the subtle Infiniti embossing that's barely visible on the bottom section of the chrome grille surround. But that's also one of four different word marks on this car's exterior, along with the lower side sills and tailgate. It's a touch excessive, particularly at the back. That rear logotype is especially disappointing because it fusses up the QX60's otherwise pretty tail. The slim tail lights wrap around the rear fenders, with a black glossy strip tying the two units together. The attractive tailgate and black finish of the contrasting roof are classy touches, but their impact is harder to spot on the deep Bordeaux paint, so I'd likely order a lighter shade to highlight the QX60's but, grand blue or warm titanium, for example. But there's no question on the interior color scheme I'd choose, this saddle brown is gorgeous. More tan than brown, the autograph-only semi-aniline leather feels rich and is seemingly everywhere, boasting a gorgeous diamond quilted pattern on the dash and seats. I wish the stitchwork extended to the sizable door inserts, which are a pleasant mix of black and tan, but alas. White piping provides a nice flash of color, while restrained ambient lighting and a slim strip of open pore would top the dash. Neatly integrated climate vents are a pleasant touch too. Still, much of the switchgear here feels identical to the Nissan Pathfinder. That includes the flimsy electric gear shifter and climate controls, which lack the solid action I expect in a luxury product. Likewise, the Nissan Source steering wheel and its dull, plastic buttons could be better. Those are my lone complaints in what is otherwise a brilliantly executed cabin. Comfort, the Nissan sourcing comes through in QX60's ride quality, too. The Pathfinder has a pleasant and composed ride, but luxury badges deserve an even plusher experience that's absent in the QX60. There's too much harshness over rough roads, with substantial bumps even causing some lateral movement as the suspension struggles to cope. There's a fair amount of suspension noise too, although cranking the surprisingly competent Bose audio system quashes much of that. At the same time, there's little tire roar or wind noise. If you live somewhere without a punishing freeze or thaw, the QX60's ride might even be competitive. Ride aside, there's much to recommend about the QX60's comfort. The seats offer the commanding height crossover customers crave, with plenty of padding and a fair amount of lateral support. The front chairs only adjust eight ways, although that's enough for most folks to get comfortable. Standard heating and cooling on the range-topping autograph trim improve matters, although the autograph-exclusive front massages are among the worst I've tested, relatively loud and limited in their range of operation, Infiniti deserves credit for pushing the envelope. It just should have pushed a little further. The second row captain's chairs drop the massages and cooling, but retain standard heating. They are a fine place to lounge out on a long journey, with a fixed center console providing enough storage space for a pair of drinks. They also flip and tilt forward, allowing a sizable entryway to the third row. 
With just 28.0 inches of legroom and 35.7 inches of headroom, the rearmost chairs are only acceptable for adults you don't like very much. They'd accommodate a pair of kids well enough, though. Here's how the QX60 shakes out relative to its chief rivals that offer a standard third row. Technology, much as the ride hues closely to the script set by Nissan, so too does the tech suite. That's okay, though, as the updated Pathfinder's infotainment and digital instrument cluster are responsive, attractive, and easy to figure out. The 12.3-inch touchscreen responds readily to inputs, although a redundant physical knob behind the gear lever provides an interface if the screen feels too far away, which it does for folks with shorter arms. If you opt for the touchscreen, a bank of icons at the bottom of the display allows quick access to different pages, making navigation easy. The digital cluster, meanwhile, also spans 12.3 inches, but like the Pathfinder and Rogue, is merely an all-screen riff on Nissan's old productivity display. Drivers can tap the direction pads on the steering wheel to browse various info pages, covering everything from drive data and audio info to navigation directions and the status of the active safety systems. The autograph trim complements this arrangement with a 10.8-inch head-up display that's bright and clear, although, and I'm feeling like a broken record, a set of polarized sunglasses renders the HUD useless. Infiniti makes only a few technology allowances for second and third row passengers. In the second row, there are two USB inputs, 1A and 1C. The third row has but one USB-A. That's on the lighter side compared to some rivals. Also, I wish Infiniti would just take the plunge and go all USB-C, considering that's the standard format for Apple iPads and other tablets. Thanks for watching. Drop a like. Leave a comment. And don't forget to subscribe to watch more videos like this.